very grateful that it's not as uh, rainy as yesterday, but it is windy. Er, actually, this morning's walk was uh, a bit of a. <laughs> it was a bit difficult. I would say maybe not most, but a very large minority of mailboxes were, uh, let's just say, disassembled. Uh, it's, it was kind of bad. But I'm outside right now because every every other Thursday uh, we have people cleaning our house. Um, it's been really nice <laughs> because it's like one big thing that we don't really have to worry about every other week and as long as we like try to stop from living in an absolute sty then it's worth it. Our house doesn't really get that dirty but it's a nice reminder to or it's like a nice automated thing to I don't know re-clean the house especially when you know we have family coming over later today for, for the weekend so it's uh it's something that we had considered for a long time in Nashville because it was such a um, a mud pit all the time and it was dirty and it got really dirty really fast but here it's not like that so it's you know here and I have different like thresholds with things being dirty and she hates when just like any dishes are in the sink for example and it doesn't really bother me that much usually sometimes it does but usually not she uh she hates when the floor is dirty as far as like like mud stains and of course i don't like that either but i will like snap when it comes to actual dirt on the floor or sand on the floor i will go absolutely insane like the other day i bought a brush because Sometimes there's just like tufts of dog hair running around and it's hard for me with the leg to like, bend down and pick them up and I don't want to you know, get up the back while she's sleeping so I just bought a brush with a dustpan on it for like, I don't know, 10 bucks in Publix and I have used it most days since I bought it <laughs> just to give you an idea of how insane I am. There are huge coconuts on all of the trees and I hope they fall when the dogs are inside. Uh, kind of making me nervous. Today I am uh, actually going to do a leg workout, which you might think is stupid. And an old leg workout would be very stupid right now, but I'm going to do my PT leg workout later. Kyrie is at her F45 class, and uh, I have to run an errand or two before I do my exercises, but I, I hope we can get everything done before everybody gets here. I hope. The dogs are hungry, I know, but you know, I don't want to let them in and eat and be psycho when people are cleaning the house, and they, they, they usually get here at like eight, and we usually get in and from walking the dogs at like 7.30 and the big guys need to wait quite a while before they eat so we don't risk bloat. But at the moment, they're all relaxing by the pool. Tough life, huh? It's been nice for me working largely from home in that when, you know, people need to come to the house during the day, during the week, there's always going to be somebody home, right? Part of it gets annoying because I still have to do the work and, you know, deal with these guys as a job in and of itself. So it kind of throws a hitch in it. But, I mean, the, the, I guess the, the, the Delta is a net positive, you know? I am... You know, happier doing what I'm doing now than what I was doing before and and at the same time I get to help manage the house so that it's not you know a stressful situation for Kyrie every day which makes my life easier if she's not stressed out that bad 
she still gets that way, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. But it's nice outside. I think it's probably, what is it, 75 degrees outside. And nice and windy, you got a nice breeze, so, um, yeah. Pretty nice. I, I hope they're done soon, because I really have to pee. <laughs> I've been working with, like, a, an Instagram business coach for, like, the last week, and I don't know why, but it's, like, doing doing the stuff that I know I have to do is just very, very cringy, right? Like, part of it is I need to record, um, like, directed stories to put on my, like, highlight, and I don't know why, but I just don't want to, right? It's, like, it seems weird. Like, one of them is just, like, my, like, and somebody even asked me for it, um, like, yesterday, like, my, my fat to fit journey and, like, what I did, and I know the story very well. I was the one who did it, organizing it and putting it on social media in that stance seems, for some reason it seems fake to me, even though it's not fake because I, I did it, right? It's exactly what happened. Uh, I, I don't know why it, se it feels like that to me. It, it shouldn't, because that would be stupid. Based on the audio level on my camera, I'm going to wait until I get back inside to keep recording because it's... Uh, getting loud. When I said I was not a quarter squat, that is quite literally what I meant. You know, I can stand here, uh, maybe back up a little bit, and I can kind of go down with holding on to these things, of course, into like a quarter squat where I start to almost kind of feel the incision site starting to pull. And because my brain's not ready for this yet, a lot of my a lot of holding myself up is on my left leg, but I can kind of consciously shift over a little bit to the right side, get that quad working, and as long as I stay here in a pause where I'm, I'm actually properly working, and then deliberately stand back up nice and slowly, I can start to kind of squat now. You're not really supposed to load it just yet after this surgery. That being said, uh, I'm a little bit advanced as far as my progression is concerned. So, um, my PT gave me the green light to go ahead and do this, because this is the this is the first time I'm doing this at home, but I've done it at PT twice. Once yesterday and once, um, I think five days ago now. So, he's seen me do it, he's seen that, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it, it's not giving me any pain, and uh, yeah. It's, it's a good activity for me to do. Um, I'm gonna call it exercise, actually, because my quads are fasciculating. Sometimes when you hold it and uh, you feel like your quads, or your, any muscle really, is starting to flicker a little bit. My muscles kind of look like my fingers do, doing this, you know? And uh, those are fasciculations. And it's kind of cool to be able to feel and see that really on both sides now. It's gonna be probably hard to see the camera, but I can definitely see it happening in my left and a little bit less in my right, but that's just because my brain is preferentially favoring putting my weight on the left side because I'm just not, uh, I'm not that used to using the right leg as much as I would like to be. So if I go a little bit shallower in my squat, I can load more on the right side and uh, yeah, just to use the quad again properly, as opposed to just, you know, sitting here and flexing it, right? So now, pause and come up, and I'll do, you know, three or four sets of eight or ten of these with a good long pause at the bottom. I feel like I don't really need the TRX when I'm down here like this, because I feel confident that I can just hold myself here, but where the TRX will come in handy is to help transition from isometric holds here to coming back up and actually putting more pull on the fixed repaired tendon. But it feels good to actually, you know, 
be able to do a new exercise that requires something more than just me moving my leg, right? Like, of course, this requires support, but it's getting one more, you know, one more step back to normalcy, and uh, it's just a step in the progression. You know, everybody's got to start somewhere, and for me, getting back to like baseline and you know still kind of relearning how to walk properly is definitely you know square one. That being said, I see a lot of people on the internet not wanting to go to the gym for fear of being embarrassed. And if you fall into that category, um, please allow this video to be a source of embarrassment that is not you. Because I went from being able to squat well north of 400 pounds to doing quarter squats in my garage with a TRX. And this is only after like six weeks of really working towards something better and a little over a month of physical therapy. Actually, not even a month, really. Because I started physical therapy almost three weeks out of surgery and I'm not at all, well, what's today? I'm kind of close to seven weeks out of surgery now. So, you know, maybe it's been almost a month. But, you know, by the same token, it's, it, it's been a long kind of, it's been a long road, right? It was just trying to figure out how to flex my quad. Then it was, hey, can you do a straight leg raise without having your knee bend first? Then it was, can you straighten your leg just against gravity, right? With like, essentially leg extensions, but not using any weights and, and barely, right? Like, they call it short arc quad. So instead of, like at a leg extension, my arm is my leg, right? Your, let's do it from this way. Like if my foot is down here, you know, this would be like a leg extension, right? But instead I'm like sitting on a couch with a pillow underneath my arm or underneath my leg and doing this, right? Just barely moving it. Now I can just sit on me on the table at PT and have my leg hanging around 90 degrees and just straighten it, no problem whatsoever. And now we do that with blood flow restriction to build some more power in, the, in that quad before we can really start loading the tendon and the muscle itself because proper heavy loads, we're, I think we're pretty close to. I think next week we might start screwing around with some bike stuff, which is a lot of fun, which means I get to go back to the gym. But for the time being, I am going to do as much as I can like this obviously without hurting myself, and my PT likes to say, don't be a hero, so I will try to not be a hero. Um, yeah, I don't want to be a hero because if I re-injure myself, now I have to do that whole thing again, and I don't want to do that. And there's only going to be so much quad tendon left after, uh, after a second and or third surgery. Um, I'm good with the one vex. So we do these probably in total 30 reps, give or take over the course of a couple sets. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna walk around my garage to loosen it back up and hop back into it. And I'm relearning how to walk, which is neat. My knees are still very much like not the same. This one's gonna be swollen for quite a while. There's gonna be goo in this one for quite a while. We're starting to kind of mash it and mix it up a little bit. There's a lot of scar tissue in there that uh, it's gonna take a long time for it to go away. But as long as I can be more or less comfortable getting down into this quarter to half squat. Like I'm, I'm nowhere near, you know, parallel. I'm nowhere near like proper squat form, squat depth. I'm just not there yet and I don't really need to be there yet. It'll come with time. And I'm, uh, I'm not really interested in using weight at the moment because I don't know that my body can handle it and I'm supporting myself kind of with this and, you know, my left leg doing most of the work. But I can, Get over to my right here a little bit, but putting a lot more weight in my right hand. And then I can kind of shift back and play with it a little bit and then come back up after a few seconds. Nothing at all is quick movements because the last thing I need to do is surprise the recently repaired tendon. I'm good, thanks. But if I lean a little bit more forward, I can get a little bit more quad use and I can lean over to my good leg and maybe you can see some fasciculations, maybe you can't, it's probably hard to see in this lighting. And then I can move over to the bad leg a little bit and I can start to feel it more. Now it's fasciculating. If I get some 
shadows out of the shot, maybe you can see it, but maybe not. And then I can kind of come back, now that I'm about even, give or take, and nice and slowly come back up, not shocking anything. Yeah, so this is going well. I'm happy with this. <sighs> Only like 30 things left to do today before people get here. Changing my uh, diabetes sights is generally not my favorite thing in the world, but something has to happen anyway. But it continues. <sighs> So, uh, so I can live, really. Had a bit of an exciting morning looking for insulin, because when I moved all of my prescriptions over from my pharmacy in Nashville to down here, everything had to go through a prior authorization. Sun shower, neat. And, of course, that takes forever. And since I had, as of right now, uh, 17 units left. It will not make me until, well, it won't get me until tomorrow morning, really. So all I wanted to do was go to a pharmacy and buy some generic Aspart over the counter. Using a good RX coupon, it's like 60 bucks, which is, you know, fine. But it needs a prescription. And at CVS, the one I normally go to, they didn't have it, so I went to a Walgreens where it's cheaper for good RX. And uh, they didn't have any of my stuff in their system. Like, I, I find it hard to believe that I've never gone to a Walgreens in the last however long I've been on this insulin, but. So, Kyrie actually had to call it in for me. And I talked to the pharmacist at the Walgreens, who was great. And she said that if I just showed up and, like, filled out the prescription myself, I could just order for myself. So if I get in a bind, I will do that next time. I have an appointment with the endocrinologist um, here in a week and change, I guess. What's today? The 16th? Yeah, a little bit more than a week. So hopefully everything else gets squared away. But until then, I got a little bit of backup insulin to last me until then. What was really weird is the when I tried it initially to get it refilled at my old pharmacy, they were like, yeah, it's too early. I'm like, well, the, the, the box says, you know, 50 units a day, and you theoretically gave me a three month supply. I use less than 50 units a day, so why am I early? I should be like, I should have plenty when I can refill it. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I thought they gave me three vials instead of four. They have like a camera system to look and apparently they, they sent me four vials. I mean, I don't know. I don't keep the vials one by one, so you know, far be it for me to call them a liar. That uh, is what it is. We got it figured out. I found it weird that like, I couldn't just buy insulin over the counter with a history of diabetes and like, to prove that I can have the pump. I guess people can abuse it. And sure, it can be very lethal if using correctly, but I don't know. It's one of those things where, like I, I get it from a safety aspect, but at the same time, you know, if Kyrie nor I were physicians and my doctor's office couldn't get to them, what was I supposed to do? My other one's been in a prior auth for like a week and a half now, and. Sure, I could have, you know, asked for it three weeks ago instead of a week and a half ago, but, you know. Just a little frustrating, but it is what it is. We have, what, maybe an hour and a half until everybody shows up? Ish? What? We have an hour and a half until everyone shows up? Yeah, yeah. I'm just all the cushions. So, we'll, uh... Try to get as much done as we can. Until then, I'm trying to get like content ahead of schedule, but with me and the two and a half hour expedition to get insulin, um, it was not a lot of fun. The CVS I went to like didn't have it in stock, like either of them, which I think they normally do, but they would have to be like, um, we could order for you for tomorrow. And yeah, I probably should have, you know, 
been looking around before today, but stuff happens. Oh well, I guess uh, bullet successfully dodged. We'll see. I think there's no uh, difference between the generic and prescription stuff because it's been out for so long, right? This is not like a new insulin. Kyrie's dad is a pharmacist and he seems to believe that there's no difference. Like there might be a difference between uh, brand and generic like thyroid medication, uh, but this, there's not a difference. It's just the same stuff. Always a lot of trash involved too, but is what it is. Oh, the other thing that made this day kind of momentous was that, and if you're a diabetic, you'll know what I'm talking about. Today was the first day in like, I'm talking about you also, Kyrie. This is the first day in like, I don't know how many months that I got to take like a naked shower today. Why? Oh, with like, yeah, with time. nothing attached to me. Mm -hmm. It's just like one of those weird things that just happens to line up on the same day. Because the Dexcom's 10 days and the pump is three and a half ish give or take so every if it's three and ten it's to be every 30 days but it's not exactly three and ten so got lucky all right more work before everybody gets here and then probably no work for days <laughs>